Hey guys, it's Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and today we are going to start watching Star Trek Picard, the sequel to Star Trek The Next Generation, and also all the Next Generation movies. Um, yeah, this, uh, this one will be interesting, as we've got another non-Doctor Who related reaction for the two of us. Um... Yeah, I am. I'm very interested in this one. Uh, I guess we should say we have seen technically almost all of Star Trek. The only things we haven't seen are the animated series and um, also Star Trek Discovery because we saw the first two episodes and we didn't really care for it. No. Uh, <laughs> now I actually did a review of the first episode of Discovery back when it came out, and that was like 2017. You can probably find it on the channel somewhere. Uh, but yeah, we didn't really care for it, so we didn't really stick with it, but um, Picard, we like Picard, we like The Next Generation, as you can probably tell, we really we really like Star Trek and uh, Next Gen, so... Now, if I recall correctly, your first Star Trek was Voyager or Enterprise? Uh, it was Voyager. Voyager, all right. So uh, we went back, ultimately, and bought all the DVDs in, uh, Alex and his brother and mom and I uh, watched all of the original series then we got the next generation watched all of those then we got Voyager and then we got Enterprise and we've seen all the movies yep uh, so yeah we have uh, a pretty good knowledge of the uh, Star Trek lore yeah and uh, and we've also seen the Orville which might as well count yes so it's mostly the people who worked on the last couple of uh, yeah. Gene Roddenberry things uh, and speaking of which yes I actually saw the original Star Trek on TV, on NBC back, that would have been, what, 66 to 68, 69, something like that. Yeah. So, yes, I watched all of those when they made their first runs. <laughs> ah, so see, not only have you seen Doctor Who when it first aired, but also Star Trek. Yes. That I wonder if that's even more of a rarity. It, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Because... Yeah, I would or at least at least a rarity among Americans. Again, they'd have to be uh, somewhat uh, of similar background in that... Uh, you know, their uh, fathers or mothers were in the service and were stationed in England uh, in the early 60s to have been able to see Doctor Who yeah, uh, and then come back to the United States uh, where, again, Star Trek, uh, I think, premiered that very first fall, uh, fall of 66, I think, when we came back. It may have been 67. I don't remember for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, because this is the first episode of the season, uh, the full-length reaction, the completely unedited reaction... Uh, will be available for free. I do this with all the shows uh, that I do full length on the first episode free. You go down in the description uh, or to the pinned comment if I remember to do that, which is debatable. Um, and there should be a link there. It'll take you to our unedited reaction, but we won't have it won't have any of the show footage because well, that's illegal. So uh, you can sync it up with your copy of the first episode of Star Trek Picard that hopefully you've obtained legally, but we're gonna. Hey, we're no one to judge. We're watching it legally, though. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it will be interesting to see this show, especially because I don't think this is, you know, taking the normal, like, next-gen sort of formula with Star Trek. I think this is more of a, you know, it's focusing solely on Picard, and this is sort of an, a continuing story yeah. rather than the one-off episodes. So, um, yeah. But it will be it'll be interesting to see. You got anything else? Two to beam up. All right. Then with that being said, let's get right into this episode of Star Trek Picard. Here we go. Bring them all back. Why not? <laughs> oh. I remember. Nope. We don't need that. All right. <sighs> That's interesting because it's not like the Borg were on there, but... Yeah, that is... Um... Who boy. <laughs> all righty. So, that is the first episode. What did you think? Uh, very intriguing. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I, we both heard that there are a lot of people who are disappointed, but... I, yeah, I've, I've heard mixed reactions, yeah. uh, both um, positive and negative. Well, and of course, you have to take into, effect, uh, to take into account that uh, Patrick Stewart's getting old, you know, and he yeah. can, uh, you can't expect him to do the things that he did in the original series, which was you know, what back in the late 80s and early 90s. You know, that's yeah. 30 years ago. Right. So, I mean, even if he was only in his 50s then, he's got to be in his 80s now. So, uh, 
but for for what it was, I enjoyed it. You know, it had yeah. it, it had a strong plot. Uh, we were able to follow it along and you know make a couple of predictions, which turned out to be somewhat accurate. Right. Um, and then you know the twist there at the end that you know what you got to do you want them coming back for more. So yeah, uh, overall I enjoyed it. Yeah, a, a twist that. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that twist. It's like okay, this is a Borg cube. Obviously damaged though. So. Yes. Uh, but it is, they did say it's a Romulan vessel now. Yes, it's a so, Romulan reclamation project or something. Yeah, like that. so I guess that's this is what the Romulans are doing. They took over a Borg cube. I guess that would kind of make sense. Well, I mean, it's crazy that they could do that, but that is that is interesting. And I like that there are Romulans at all. Like, do we ever get any Romulans anymore? Like, um, Now, uh, again, the uh, the Romulans... Uh, in the uh, old series, um, in the original series, and then uh, yeah, again, we didn't really see them that much in in Next Generation, yeah, uh, or uh, Deep Space Nine or any of the others. Uh, but yeah, they were they are always good because they're the they're the mirror image. They're the opposite side of the coin of the Vulcans, whereas the Vulcans yeah. had you know renounced all of the feelings and everything. The Romulans Romulans had embraced that. The Romulans were more warlike, whereas the Vulcans were more uh, peaceful. So uh, again, it, yeah, it's good to bring them back. Yeah, uh, offers a lot of real uh, good possibilities. Yeah, and I think because I think uh, Enterprise was supposed to do the Romulan War, but it got canceled before they could. Yeah. So, and, and I guess you know we did have uh, the the villain of the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie was a Romulan, and that and I like that this also now builds off of the catalyst of that movie because the whole thing is okay. Romulus is destroyed, and Spock and uh, Nero get sent back in time. That's how we get our new adventures with uh, Kirk and Spock. But now we're back on our original timeline, and that's just still going forward. Yeah. Um, so I now, do like that. I, again, I don't remember this because it's been so long since we've seen it. But wasn't the last Next Generation movie, Nemesis, wasn't yes. Picard's son actually Romulan or something like that? Um, I only vaguely remember that it, film. It was like, it was kind of a, like, a Romulan-raised clone of Picard. Okay. And he was younger. It was uh, yeah. Tom Hardy as the younger sort of Picard. Um, yeah, I, I suppose it could have benefited to rewatch uh, Nemesis. <laughs> Which, <sighs> uh, Nem- well, Nemesis is better than Insurrection. That's, yes, well, there's at least that, but... Um, Insurrection is like uh, Star Trek V, you know. But Star Trek V is funny. No. Oh, yeah, it no, is. No, it, no, yes, no, no. yes, Star Trek V, you can watch and be like, this is garbage, but I love it. Insurrection <sighs> is just boring. Yeah. So, uh, but Nemesis, Nemesis, it, 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 it happened, honestly. But, and it, but uh, and it's unfortunate that we have to build off of that, that because of the... Um, because that was the movie that killed off Data, and now we're sort of building on that. But, but honestly, now that I think about it, I think we remember everything from Nemesis. We, I don't think we need to watch Nemesis again. I hope not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll just stick with First Contact. That's, it. That's why I put First Contact out, because it's the good Next Generation movie. And, and Generations is alright. Generations was fun. Yeah. Um, alright, well, we might as well get into the notes that I took. Um, I wrote down, uh, Picard's dream at the beginning, which at first I was like, I was trying to think like, okay, they show the Enterprise D and okay, he's playing, he's playing poker with Data. And I, I was thinking like, okay, maybe this is a flashback. And I was like, if this is a flashback, they didn't put any thought into de-aging Patrick Stewart. And I was like, okay, well maybe he's on the holodeck then. And then it turned out to be a dream because Mars exploded in the background and it's like, Okay, that was a lot of different things, none of which I thought became true until so I was like, "Oh, it's a dream." Like that was interesting, and it kind of shows the that he does sort of have these lingering dreams about what happened with Mars, uh, which is interesting. So, so not only does this build on, not only does this build on the destruction of Romulus, which was presented to us in the two thousand nine movie. But also now the destruction of Mars that has resulted from that. So now, did I understand correctly that they were trying to relocate the Romulans to Mars? Um, 
I would have. I would assume it would be that. But somehow the rogue synthetics ended up, yeah, you know, killing what did they say nineteen. It, it was like ninety thousand oh, people. Yeah, something. So huge so, amount. So all right. So it, yeah. Obviously, we'll find that out later in this season. Yeah. It it, it was something. They said something like that. Um, which it, it's a little hard to follow. It's like, okay, that's two planets that we have to keep in mind were destroyed at this point. Um, so it's like, okay, so they knew Romulus was going to be destroyed. And so Picard wanted to relocate the Romulans, but there were a lot of people that were like, eh, they're all, they're our oldest enemy. Why should we do that? And I, I do like that Picard, you know, you know, stuck to his values, basically, like, no, these are lives. And our Romulan lives, they are lives, and we need to save them. That's yeah. what Starfleet should do. Um, and so after that, it was that they, I guess they relocated the Romulans, I have to assume, from to Mars. And something, something happened. He said, like, Starfleet isn't Starfleet anymore. It's not as good as it once was, you know, back in the next generation days. So that's why he ended up leaving. So I'm just, I'm just trying to like piece together everything that they brought up. Cause honestly, that is a lot of like lore they have dropped on us now. Yeah. So I am trying to figure it all out. Well, we may, again, we may have to go back and, uh, even watch the end of Deep Space Nine because wasn't there a huge war at the end of Deep Space Nine with the, uh, well, the Dominion and, and they did the have the Dominion War, but I mean, but I think I don't think that would necessarily play in. I do find it a little odd that it's like okay, well, you know, there are a bunch of people that don't want to help the Romulans. They're our oldest enemy. It's like we haven't really had a conflict with the Romulans though for for a long time. I mean, if you're gonna say that, then we shouldn't help the Klingons either. Yeah. But the Klingons are now our allies, so it's like. I'm not too sure about that one, but again, it, it has been a while since we watched like Next Gen and all that, so okay. maybe we could be missing something, and you guys can clear it up for us in the comments. Um, so yeah, it's it's it is interesting, sort of, that not only is this building on the destruction of Romulus, but also now adding in this, I guess, this prejudice against Romulans and throwing in the destruction of Mars at the hands of synthetics. Um, which is interesting that they kind of went back and forth a little bit between calling them synthetics and calling them androids because it was always just androids, this whole synthetic thing, which it, it makes sense, the term works, but um, it's just interesting that they kept kind of bouncing back and forth between that. Well, you <laughs> certainly don't mean to open up a can of worms, but just to suggest that this does kind of uh, mirror things that are currently happening. Uh, politically, you know, we have people from a different part of the world who <clears throat> certain elements in the United States are trying to keep out, uh, whether they're actually in our hemisphere or in another hemisphere. Yeah. And, you know, the humanitarian thing is to say, you know, you really should accept them, but, you know, we're getting the America first, like we're getting the, you know, Federation first sort of vibe. That's yeah. the vibe I was getting. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but that certainly that, was an underpinning there. That that would make sense. And that's that's Star Trek for you. Yeah. They, Star Trek does that uh, with their plot line. So I could definitely see that that being... And that makes a lot more sense uh, on here. Uh, so, yeah, I could definitely see that. It's like, okay, there's that hesitation that does sort of reflect things that are happening in our world, too. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, I will say there is the slightest bit of like disconnect when I think about this show in comparison to the next generation because man, they have the highest budgets on these Star Trek shows yeah. now. Like, and, and that's you know, I guess that's good for them. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't really care for the production design on Discovery. I thought it was a little too much, but here I think it's actually working. Yeah, we'll see. Our, our original problem with Discovery, is, as far as the production design, was that it was supposed to be a prequel to the original series. Yes. And was nowhere near uh, the kind of, you know, sterile Enterprise yeah. A, I guess we would call it, uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, in the whole design of the Klingons and everything else that we watched, it's just like, uh, yeah. it, it, it didn't do what they said it was going to do, whereas this one, because it's now later than all the rest of those... Yeah, it, it works. It, it works, you know? Because even if you think about this 
like in relation to the next gen movies, it it works out yeah. pretty well. It's like okay, you can you can still like look at first contact and be like, okay, well that was made maybe twenty years ago or so, but they look pretty pretty yeah. close now. And the fact that they can do a production design this big on television or streaming that is pretty impressive. But again, you also have to remember that the the, the Star Trek. <laughs> Empire Universe, whatever you want to call it, they've made, I would bet, billions of dollars off of those last three movies with you know Chris Pine and uh, Zachary Quinto and, and all those. Yeah. Plus, they continue to have reruns and the sales of merchandise like the DVDs and all this right. other stuff. So they have the money now where they can do that. That's Plus, true. Plus, they're also counting on the fact that uh, the Star Trek fans like us are going to buy into this, and so that will they will be able to get back the money that they put into it. Yeah, I, I mean, if we can get slightly real and a little snarky for a second, this is probably the only reason anyone's getting CBS All Access. Yeah. Let Let's be honest. The, let's not you know tap dance around it. This is probably this is probably it. So they're putting all of that money <laughs> into these shows, which good on them. Discovery could look a little better though. Even if they made it look closer to the 2009 Enterprise, like, even that, but even that, you know, that was completely white, glossy, it looked like an Apple store, honestly. Yeah. And it's like, but that's beside the point. That's getting off onto there. And honestly, maybe another, maybe another plus for this show in terms of production design is, like, there is a lot, there seems to be, like, a lot of on location shooting like you know you know we're not just you know here we're on the bridge and now let's go outside a little bit it's like no that looked like you know here we are in uh chateau picard here we are in san francisco i don't know where they filmed all this i don't think they kept going back and forth between those two locations um but it it definitely like helps us like oh yeah we're just at his house in france here we are in at the archives we'll just cg it a little bit to make it look futuristic yeah so uh, let's see. Um, I wrote down, I wrote down Daj and Data, their connection there, which is interesting. So, okay, so it's not, because I was curious, like, okay, so, like, we have that it's like, okay, she is basically Data's new daughter, and it's like, okay, when did he have time to do that, and why is it that, like, she believes that she was, you know, born, and it's like, okay, well, how does that work? But they go into that, honestly, she's not, it's not really, like, an android, you know, because she's, like, a an android made of flesh and bone. She's more like a cyborg, honestly, yeah. um, which is interesting. And I, I'm glad that they said, it's like, okay, well, she was basically made by this Maddox guy um, who wanted to try to basically revive Data, um, which is interesting. It would be... Um somewhat intriguing, I think, to see if the name Daj uh, actually means daughter in some current language on Earth. Yeah, I, I was curious about her name. I was like, okay, that's it's got to be a, a purpose to her name. Yeah. And, and, well, also the fact that, you know, it if you were to cut the word daughter in half, D-A-U-G-H, uh, da, you know, so I don't know. I, I yeah. don't know if that was a connection or not. But yeah, I just kind of thought, yeah, that's got to be. There's got to be some connection there, or the it, or the name Dodge has to be actually daughter or you know offspring or child or something like that in, in some language. Or I, I would also I would also wager it could possibly be a translation of the word data. So I I feel it, it would have to be either some connection to daughter or some connection to the word data. Yeah. So. Uh, but it was definitely interesting, and it makes sense with the whole, um, you know, she sees Picard, like, in her head. It's like, okay, that's how, when she gets activated, when her poor boyfriend just got a knife straight through his heart. Poor guy. Um, Assuming he had a heart. <laughs> we don't know. But, I, I, I mean, guess that's true. He wasn't a Klingon, but I guess he was... Yeah, oh, but, she, uh, she, did, she did mention his ethnicity, but um, I, yeah, I don't he was on for so little time, we didn't get a chance to explore yeah, any of that. It, he didn't look like a Klingon, but... Well, he did have the, you know, the forehead stuff. It, yeah, I suppose. I mean, so yeah, I don't know if, if a Klingon has a heart. I mean, see, if they were if they were Time Lords, you stab here, you miss both hearts. Why have they never done that on Doctor Who? That's off, the, that's off topic, but they should do that sometime. Just stab him, and he's like, eh, well, I'm good. Anyway, so, so it, it made sense with all the, you know, seeing Picard. It's like, okay, 
Data has basically, or Data and Maddox basically, have put in, like, you will be safest with Picard. Um, which is interesting. It's like, uh, it would honestly kind of makes you think, it's like, okay, just, just Picard. Like, none of the rest of them, uh, which is kind of interesting. But, but Data, literally, his his good friend was Picard, you know? He, yeah. He worked with uh, Wesley Crusher. He worked with Riker and Deanna Troy and all the rest, but he was truly friends with Picard. Yeah, I guess it would be the same thing, like, if this was, instead of Data, if it was Seven of Nine, probably send her to Janeway, and probably not any of the others. Yeah. yeah it would probably be best to send her to Janeway. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was all interesting. Um, uh, I wrote down the assassins, which were Romulan assassins, he said. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, involving the Romulans. I do like that. Um, it makes me curious why, well, okay, I was going to say why would the Romulans go after her, but, I mean, if it was the, you know, the synthetics that wiped out a lot of the Romulans on Mars, I guess that would make sense for revenge, because I was thinking, like, okay, well, it, it wouldn't make sense for Romulans to go after Picard. He was the one that helped them uh, to get off Romulus uh, before it was destroyed. So, which, also, that whole thing of, okay, it was Picard that, you know, persuaded uh, the Federation to help the Romulans. Like, okay, well, that's interesting, but Spock was also involved with that, because that's why he got sent back in time anyway. So, um, it would be... Although, we might need to rewatch that one. Actually, I feel like I feel like I'd rather rewatch that one than Nemesis. But well, there's a lot of there is some stuff with the destruction of Romulus. Yeah, we we may have to just you know bite the bullet and rewatch Nemesis. I I can. It's I mean it still has Patrick Stewart. It still has all of them, yeah. so it's got to be all right. And it's not Insurrection. Insurrection's just the worst, man. See, I see. Okay. I can take Star Trek V because it's just so goofy. Like when they're being like, "Yo, Jim, you don't ask the Almighty for your ID for his ID." It's like that's it's hilarious. Yeah, it's not. I love Star <laughs> Trek V. It's so dumb. Yeah. Oh, it's so amazing. It's so amazingly dumb. Um. So anyway, so yeah, the assassins. I guess it would make sense to go after her, especially if. I guess technically they would be sort of the last of the synthetics then because everything else was banned. I imagine if there were any others, they would have been destroyed. And it would also be interesting, like, with this and the whole thing, like, oh, maybe a part of Data is within uh, one of the two of them. You know, I, I do wonder if you could sort of bring in Lore. I don't remember what happened to him, though. I can't remember if he was disassembled or not. I mean, he might, I mean... He might have been, but I feel like that has happened before and he's come back. So it, it could be possible that they might bring him in. I think that would be interesting, too. Especially just because well, Lord's a good villain, just being, you know, the, yeah. the anti-Data, basically. That so which is not Data, is Lore. Yeah. A great line. Uh, let's see. Um, and yeah, I wrote down the twin. I do feel bad for Dodge, though, that she ended up just exploding. I was like... Well, that can't be good. Like, she just exploded. Which, okay, she... Because she was clearly burning from the Romulan blood. So I guess that's just the thing. Romulan blood is acidic. And then the gun just exploded. Like, man, that's, that was just unfortunate. I was like, okay, there's something something's going on then. Because we can't just kill her off just like that. And, well, we did end up doing that. But, okay, we're going to go look for the twin. Um, I will say it's... It's a little hard to suspend... To suspend disbelief... When you see uh, Picard getting launched all the way back by that explosion, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you, you had a few scrapes and bruises, but I'll, otherwise you're all right. It's like, eh, I don't know. You remember that last ice storm we had? I fell on the the ice and I was limping for two weeks. So yeah, if yeah I, I suspect if I got blown halfway across a parking garage, I would I would be incapacitated for yeah, some time. Yeah, but and I'm not I even mean, as old as that. I mean, I guess. I guess they didn't say how long he was out. It could have been two weeks, for all we know. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. Um, and I guess the last thing I wrote down was the Borg cube that the Romulans have taken. 
I'm very curious how they did that. Yeah, nice um, little cliffhanger. Yeah, it, yeah, that makes me very curious. Like, I, I gotta know how did they do that. Um, that is uh, definitely interesting. Uh, other than that, I guess the only other thing I can think of is I like that his dog is called Number One. <laughs> That's just clever. <laughs> um, it'll get awkward though if, if Riker does show up, which well, I think I, at yeah, some I've point seen a preview where yeah, he's supposed to show up at he, some he's point. He's talking to Riker, so yeah. And I think in the trailer they show Seven of Nine at one point. So, um, so yeah, I'm sure that'll be funny when we get to that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wrote down for this episode. You got anything else? Nope. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, that is pretty much that. Uh, really enjoyed this episode, and we are looking forward to the next one, which will be out uh, next Monday will be when the next video goes up. So these are actually going to go up on Mondays at 2 o'clock uh, to coincide with our Doctor Who classic reactions. So okay. you, get a, you get a lot of the two of us on Mondays now. So yeah, that is pretty much it. With all that being said, we're Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of our Star Trek Picard reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.